Shabbat Shalom po. Magandang hapon po sa bawat isa. Tayo po tayong lahat. Pagkasin lang po natin to ng sabay-sabay. I will worship the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Sige po, i-recite natin, i-declare natin ng tatlong beses yan ng sunod-sunod all together. I will worship the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will worship the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will worship the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Um, sinabi po ng scripture, di ba, that we should speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen po ba? So, so normal lang sa family ng Panginoon na nag declare tayo ng goodness ng Panginoon sa bawat isa. Amen po ba? Okay. And what's beautiful about this sacred assembly is that lahat tayo participants sa worship. Amen. Alright, lahat din tayo dito may, may kanya-kanyang offering para sa Panginoon. Amen? So, ganito. Before kami mag-lead ng song, before, before we lead you to sing the songs that we have lined up for today, we wanna ask you to be worship leaders for today. Amen? So, what you're gonna do, you're going to exhort to at least minimum of three beloveds. You're going to exhort, sabihin nyo, beloved. Let's worship the Lord because... Okay, fill in the blanks. Okay? Tatlo ha, minimum of three, maximum of five. Iko tayo, sabihin nyo, Beloved, let's worship the Lord because... O, oh, kung, kung bakit. Alright? Ready na po ba ba isa? Sige po. Iko tayo.
curtains would brighten up the darkest sounds. Would soften all the wounded hearts. Would cover forgives the greatest sins. What's
I stand in the midst of the multitude of those of every tribe and tongue. We are your people, redeemed by your blood, rescued from death by your love. There are no words good enough to thank you there are no words to express my praise but I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God.
chains to be more like you then all the nations will see your glory revealed and worship you hallelujah 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 to the lamb hallelujah hallelujah by the blood of christ we stand every time every tribe every people every land giving glory giving honor giving praise unto the lamb of god I stand in the midst of a multitude of those from every tribe and tongue. We are your people, redeemed by your blood, rescued from death by your blood. No words, no words. There are no words to express my praise, but I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah. Hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Mga babae, awitin natin ang ating Panginoon. Lord, we stand by grace in your prayer. Working us and through us till we are changed to be more like you. Then all the nations will see your glory revealed and worship you. Hallelujah! 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 To the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Every knee shall bow. confess that you are Lord of all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, Giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ.
Sige po. Um, inhale, exhale muna tayo. Inhale, exhale. <laughs> Enjoy the presence of the Lord. Amen po. Ang um, welcome po natin yung mga nakita nating baguhan sa paligid natin. Welcome po kayo dito. The Lord is with you and Jesus loves you. Grabe po yung mga kanta, no? Sige po, um, sabihan natin yung ating katabi. By the blood of the Lamb, you stand. Ah, di ba po? Dahil sa dugo ng Panginoon, nandito tayo. Still, marami na tayong pinagdaanan sa buhay. Nakaabot na tayo sa ganitong taon. Pero still, we stand because of the blood of the Lamb. Amen po? At sa grasya lang talaga po ng Panginoon, kaya tayo nakakatayo. Amen po? Sige po, batiin po natin yung katabi natin. Happy Sabbath rest! Dapat yung pagbati, yung may ngiti po talaga. Happy Sabbath rest! Happy Sabbath rest! Sige po, let's close our eyes at magpray po tayo. Heavenly Father, thank you for using me in your ministry, O Lord. Thank you for guiding me thus far and granting me your grace. Let your Holy Spirit take full control of me and let Him speak, not me. You know the needs of the people who will be listening to, the, to this preaching. I submit myself to you so that you can use me in whatever way you want to. Help us to focus only to you. Remove all our preconceived ideas, Panginoon, na freely ka po maka... Makakilos po, Panginoon, sa aming puso, Panginoon. I-open mo po, Panginoon, ang aming spiritual ears, spiritual eyes, Panginoon. And open the hearts, Panginoon, of understanding, O Lord God, na makatch po talaga namin, Panginoon, ang, ang nais mo pong ipaabot po sa bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. This is your divine appointment, Panginoon, sa bawat isa sa amin, Lord God. Kaya, Panginoon, naniniwala po kami na May purpose ka po sa araw na to. And change us, Lord God, from glory to glory by your words, O Lord God. And hindi lang po kami maging hearer, Lord God, ng iyong salita, kundi maging doer po kami ng iyong salita. At, at maging buhay na patutuo po, Panginoon, ang kabutihan mo po sa bawat isa sa amin. Lord, thank you, Panginoon. We glorify you, we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Ang um, bali po ang topic po natin ngayon is be steadfast in your faith with peace, hope and love. 'Di ba po yung dati pong ano, ang na share po ni beloved Christine yung come up higher. Syempre po 'di ba kapag we come up higher, the, the more din po yung struggles and Challenges na kakaharapin natin. Amen po? Kaya, the Lord is speaking to us to be steadfast in our faith. Kasi, hindi tayo makakakam up higher kung hindi tayo steadfast sa ating pananampalataya. Pero hindi lang po basta pananampalataya, kundi pananampalataya with peace, hope, and love. Ang dito po natin, ang di ba po itong word na to, faith, peace, hope, and love, Lagi na natin yan naririnig po, di ba? Sa um, lagi natin na encounter sa Bible. Pero we may never know na may connection po siya sa bawat isa na hindi lang po ang um, pananampalataya lang kundi may kalakip na peace, hope and love ang ating pananampalataya. Sige po, ang um, basahin po natin yung Romans 5, 1 to 5 in KJV version. Sige po, let's, let's read po. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom always we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glorify a glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts 
by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Thank you, Lord, sa salita mo, Panginoon. Uh, sige po, let's define steadfast. Ang sabi po dito, yung steadfast is resolutely, resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering, firmly fixed in place, firm in belief, firm, hindi yung halimbawa kung saan yung agos ng alon, doon tayo, hindi tayo nagiging firm sa ating pananampalataya. Dapat maging firm in belief, may determination or adherence and loyal and immovable. Sabi po dito, being steadfast means trusting the truth of God's word over the say of any man. Being steadfast means being rooted and grounded in the word throughout any season or circumstance. The measure of your steadfastness is proven over time. So, hindi lang po ang basta-basta ngayon, steadfast ka na agad. Kumbaga, by time, nade-develop yung pagiging steadfast natin sa ating pananampalataya. Kasi kung, kung, hindi, kung hindi naman, kung automatic naman yan, so hindi na tayo nakakaranas ng mga challenges and circumstances po, di ba? So sabi po dito sa Colossians 1, 1, 23, basahin po natin. If you continue in your faith, establish and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. Sino po yung hope natin? Hope of glory. Jesus. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. 1 Corinthians 15.58 Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So, our labor is not in vain. Kaya patience lang po sa ginagawa ng Panginoon sa buhay po natin. So, sabi po dito, yung faith is the foundation of peace, hope, and love. Peace is the result of faith and unnecessary condition for hope and love. Ito pong faith, peace, hope, and love, essential po ito sa, sa pagiging kristyano po natin. Di ba po, ngayon naririnig po natin yung word na essentials. Lalabas lang daw pag may bibilhin na essentials. Di ba po? Kaya ito, sa ating pagwalk, sa ating ang pagiging kristyano, kailangan din po talaga natin itong faith, peace, hope, and love. Ito yung essential po. Hope grows out of peace and provides the environment where God's love flourish in our hearts. And love is the fulfillment of hope. It is the ultimate goal, the greatest thing of all. So ano po yung faith? Faith is the, is the gift of God. It is not of ourselves. So, yung pananampalataya natin galing yan sa ating Panginoon. Kaya wala po talaga tayong may pagmamalaki kahit sa pananampalataya natin. Kasi talagang galing din sa Kanya yon. We receive it from Him. It is the special work of the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to who Jesus is and to show us our need of Him and to create within us the capacity to trust Him. He gives you a new heart, the gift of faith. Amen po. Ang example po dito sa pag-exercise ng faith natin, di ba po, minsan, nag exercise tayo, gusto natin, halimbawa, gusto natin ang um, magkaroon ng tuhod na malakas. So, kailangan natin i-practice yung muscles, mag-walking, mag-running. So, ganun din po sa faith natin. Kung hindi natin i-exercise, hindi din po siya mag-operate. So, ang faith po natin, hindi siya automatic kailangan niya i-operate. Sabi po dito sa example, some of us spend time every day exercising certain muscles that we want to develop. You say, halimbawa kapag hindi tayo nakapag-exercise, sabihin natin, I haven't run for a week and I feel the difference. Di ba po, kapag na- nakasanayan mo na na lagi kang nag-walking, tapos biglang, hindi ka nakapag-walking ng one week. Parang iba talaga yung pakiramdam, di ba po? Kasi nakasanayan na ng katawan mo yon. 
Similarly, if a week goes, uh, goes by without exercising faith, you will notice the difference. The longer you go without using faith, the greater the, the, da the danger that you will forget how to use faith altogether. So yun po, kapag hindi pala natin in-exercise yung faith natin, pwedeng makalimutan po natin na may pananampalataya pala tayo. Minsan nakala natin, pananampalataya pa natin yun, pero sa sarili na lang pala natin yung nakakayahan. Kaya minsan po, di ba, nakaka-feel tayo ng kapaguran. Kasi nga, akala natin, yun na yun. Pero hindi po pala. Ang um, for example, nun sa Luke 8.25, yung na-encounter nila yung sa, nasa dagat sila, tapos biglang nag, nag, nagkaroon ng bagyo sa gitna ng dagat, tapos kasama nila si Jesus. Sige po, basahin natin yung Luke 8.25. Ang sabi, ang sabi doon ni Jesus, Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. And fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. So yung question na, where is your faith? It makes it clear that you can have this gift of faith and never use it. So tinanong ng, ng Lord, ni Jesus, yung mga disipulo niya, Asan yung pananampalataya niyo? Di ba kung isipin natin kasama na nila ang Panginoon noon, pero hindi nila nagamit yung, ano, yung faith nila that time. So in other words, where is your faith is, why aren't you exercising the faith I have gifted to you? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng where is your faith. Faith works on manual, you have to put it into operation. So in Luke 8.22, one day Jesus said to his disciple, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. So dito, pinapakita ng Panginoon na He never promised a storm-free life. Kaya kung nakakaranas man po tayo ng iba't ibang pagsubok, hindi na po tayo, hindi na po tayo Um, parang maninibago kasi part na po talaga yun ng ating araw-araw na buhay. Lalo na nung nakilala natin ang ating Panginoon at tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoon, talagang mas grabe yung dadanasin natin kasi remember this po, pinapakialaman lang ng enemy ang taong hindi sa kanya. Kaya kung nakakaranas man tayo ng pagsubok, alam natin na kasama natin ating Panginoon dahil alam ng enemy na hindi tayo sa kanya kaya ginagawa niya ang kahit anong distraction na gusto niyang gawin sa tao para mapasa kanya. Amen, Amen po. Kaya kapag may, may pagsubok po tayo, huwag po tayong padadala dahil alam natin na lahat ng pagsubok ay may katapusan po at may solusyon. Jesus never promised fair weather sailing only that we would arrive at the destination. Eh di ba po, ang ganda. Jesus never promised fair weather sailing only that we would arrive at the destination. Kung baga, kung ano yung sinimula na ni Lord sa buhay natin, tatapusin niya po talaga yun kasi promise niya po yun. Hindi po si Lord nagbabago ng kanyang salita. Kung ano po yung sinabi niya, yun na po siya. He never changed And He will never change. Number one, faith is the foundation of peace, hope, and love. Romans 5.1 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So peace grows out of justification. Justification is by faith. Therefore, faith is the foundation of peace. Tandaan po natin yan. Faith is the foundation of peace. Peace. Meron po tayong, di ba, justification, sanctification, and glorification. Yung justification, pas na yon. Nung si Lord Jesus Christ, pinako sa krus at tinubos tayo sa ating mga kasalanan at tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoon. Yung sanctification, yun yung present natin na dinadanas natin ngayon, pinagdaraan natin ngayon. Kasi, ang um, sinasanctify niya tayo para lumabas kung ano yung totoong tayo. Kaya, minsan, kapag halimbawa nakikita natin sa sarili natin na 
feeling natin, di ba, minsan ako condemn tayo ng sarili natin kasi ganito tayo, ganyan tayo. Praise God kasi in-expose ng Panginoon yung character natin. Praise God dahil in-expose ng light yung darkness, dark side natin. Kasi kung hindi naman yung talaga ma-expose, paano natin malalaman, di ba? Nakatago lang yun. Kaya, praise God, kaya sabi nga ni Pastora, ang um, love, love, love. <laughs> yun po. At yun nga, madami pa po tayong pagdadaanan. Kaya, kapit lang po sa Panginoon. To be justified means to be declared innocent. Justified means to be declared innocent. Is the opposite of the word condemn, which means to be declared guilty. Kung yung ano, justified means you're innocent. Pero kapag condemn means to be declared guilty. So tayo, tayo noon, nung hindi pa tayo, uh, hindi pa natin nakilala ang ating Panginoong Isus. Um, innocent ba tayo guilty? <laughs> diba? Guilty po tayo. Ngayon, justified na tayo. Amen po. Kaya thank you Lord dahil we are justified na. So Adam introduced sin and death to the world and they continue today. So kabaliktaran, si Jesus Christ naman by dying for our sin brought God's grace to all who believe. Sino dito ang naniniwala sa Panginoong Jesus? Amen po. Ang example po nito, yung to be justified means to be declared innocent. Yung sa typical courts, courtroom scene. Di ba po, dun sa typical courtroom scene, the lawyers have completed their concluding statements. The judge has instructed the jury. The jury has deliberated and now they are ready to deliver the verdict. So ano kayong pakiramdam na parang nag-aalat ka na lang po kay verdict kung guilty or not guilty? Di ba po? Nakakaba po yun. Kasi the defendant will either be justified, declared innocent of the charges, or he will be condemned, declared guilty of the charges. So sino po dito ang nakaranas na, na mag, mag-attend ng mga court hearing? Di ba po, yung, yung senaryo po doon sa court, very silent po talaga, di ba? Yung judge lang at yung attorney ang... nagsasalita. At kung wala namang itatanong, hindi ka magsasalita. Talagang napakatahimik, naghihintay ng verdict, ng decision. So, it is not a pleasant experience. Everything rides on that single word will drop from the head juror's lips. Diba? Maghihintay ka na lang na kung anong lalabas sa bibig ng jurors. If they speak the word innocent, ano kaya maramdaman natin? You're innocent. Ano kaya, di ba? What freedom and relief. Di ba? Hi, salamat. I'm not guilty. <laughs> Pero, but if they speak the word guilty, what sorrow, anguish, and shame. Di ba po? Nandun na lahat ng pakiramdam. Parang, parang guguho ng mundo mo. Parang last na to. Lord, ayoko na. <laughs> so, same po sa atin bilang Kristiyano. We will stand po sa courtroom ng ating Panginoon one day. God will both judge and jury, for He knows all the facts that He acts with perfect justice and righteousness in accordance with His character. So siguro ko, when the record of your life examined in a minute, ngayon in a minute lang, i-examine ng Panginoon ang buhay natin. Ano kaya na-expect natin na marinig sa Kanya? Diba po? What do you expect to hear? Innocent of all charges or guilty as charged? The answer makes all the difference in the world. All the difference for all of eternity. Iba po yung, yung answer sa, sa worldly, worldly courtroom, sa courtroom ng Panginoon. The overwhelming importance of being justified or declared innocent by God In God's present, nothing else matters in comparison. So, kaya nga po tayo nandito, lagi nagtitipon-tipon, ang um, nagfe-fellowship para po magpalakasan ng bawat isa, para po ang um, mag-mature tayo sa sa walk natin sa pagiging Kristiyano. Kasi hindi po talaga natin kaya 
ng sariling lakas lang po talaga natin. Lagi natin kailangan every minute ang guidance ng Holy Spirit sa buhay natin para magawa natin yung kalooban talaga ng Panginoon. Kasi everyday na, na gumigising tayo, pagdilat pa lang natin ng ating mata, may purpose na agad ang Panginoon sa atin. Hindi pa nga tayo kumiki, kumikilos, nag, uh, nag-run na yung araw natin, yung purpose ni Lord sa buhay natin. Kaya, kaya yung, kung nang nabasa ko yun, inisip ko agad kung everyday kaya nag- na nagoglorify ko ang Panginoon sa buhay ko. 'Di ba? Parang yung isipin every day tayo ang um, ginigising ng Panginoon for his pleasure. Pero parang minsan hindi natin nagagawa talaga yung purpose ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. We are ju- ang letter B Letter B, we are justified not by works, but through faith. We are justified not by works, but through faith. You can never be justified or declared innocent in God's sight by your works for one very simple reason. Ano yung reason na yon? We are not innocent. We are all guilty, guilty as charged. Yun nga, yun nga. We are all have sinned and for short of the glory of God. Sa Romans 3, 21 to 26. Masahin po natin. Romans 21, 26. Romans 3, 21 to 26. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement. Through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith, He did this to demonstrate His righteousness because in His perseverance He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Sino yung justify? Those who have faith in Jesus. And so, if you ask God to look at your works, declare you innocent, so you, you are in effect asking God to lie. Uh, example nito yung sa Luke chapter 5. Yung sinabihan ni Jesus si Peter na ikas cast down your net, yung net. Di ba, ano, buong gabi na po sila noon nag, ang nag, nag-fishing, pero wala silang nahuli. Pero, Nung na-encounter nila si Jesus, nung sinabihan sila na i-cast yung net, marami silang nahuli nun po, di ba? Sige po, basahin po natin sa Luke 5 para po mas, mas maunawaan po natin. When he had finished speaking, he had said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of CBD, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on, on shore, let everything, and followed him. So dito naalala ko yung teaching ni teacher Jan, yung sinabi ni um, Jesus to Simon na, From now on, you will fish for people. Ito yung ang um, disciple 
make disciple for all nations. So dito po, makikita po natin, di ba po, without Christ, that night of fishing, night of fishing, um, means din po siyang fleshly efforts. Kung baga, mas kantigibo na po talaga ninda, dahil talaga po sinda nakaka, nakakakuaki fish, dahil sinda nakaka gather. So dito po, they caught nothing, but with Christ in the morning, they caught a multitude of fish. So, sino po dito ang unang nag-initiate? Ano pong nauna dito? Grace or repentance? Di ba po, Grace? Dahil sa grasya ng Panginoon. Naranasan ni Simon Peter yung grasya ng Panginoon that leads him to repent. That leads to repentance. Kaya, grabe po talaga ang, ang pag-initiate ng Panginoon sa atin na kahit anong gawin nating ang um, minsan cold tayo, minsan ang hindi natin na-acknowledge ang presence ng Panginoon. Pero, hindi po talaga siya tumitigil, mag-initiate, naabutin pa din tayo para balik, ibalik sa, sa Kanya. ba diba po? Kaya yung grace po yung nauna po doon, and yun po, that leads to repentance. That's why justification must be through faith, not by works. Sige po, sabihin po natin sa ating katabi, Justification must be through faith, not by works. Rather, it is through faith that we receive a righteousness from God that replaces our own unrighteousness. Number two, peace is the result of faith and unnecessary condition for hope and love. Romans 5.1 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace is the result of faith and the necessary condition for hope and love. So, connect, connect, connect po talaga yung faith, peace, hope, and love. Peace is the present condition. Bakit pre- present condition siya, yung peace? Kasi nasa sa atin ang ating Panginoon, di ba po? Peace is, yung in-impress po sa akin ito ng, ng Panginoon, nang bibititate ako ng word, Yung peace is salvation. So kapag ang um, kapag tinanggap natin ating Panginoong Isus bilang ang um, Diyos at nakapagligtas ng ating buhay, personal Savior, we are at peace. Kasi kahit anong mangyari, nasa sa Kanya na tayo. Pero minsan nadada pa, pero babangon at babangon tayo. Amen po. Since we have been justified, we have peace now. It is our present possession. It is not something we hope to attain in the future. As surely as we have been justified by faith, we enjoy peace with God in the present moment. So, ang i-different, ang i, ano po natin, differentiate po natin yung peace with God to peace of God para mas maunawaan po natin. Peace with God, ay una po yung the peace of God is a subject feeling that we experience. when we obey the command. So, na, di ba, nagkakaroon tayo ng peace, peace of God. Halimbawa, may pinapagawa tayo sa atin ang Panginoon, tapos nag-obey tayo. Di ba, may peace tayo kasi alam natin na ginawa natin. Pero kapag may pinagawa ang ating Panginoon, tapos hindi naman tayo sumunod, di ba po, nakakabagabag ng kaisipan, parang wala ka pong, wala ka pong peace sa isip mo dahil alam mo na hindi ka nag-obey sa Panginoon. Basahin po natin yung Philippians 4:6-9. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. And the peace of God by which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So ito po. 
Sabi po dito, di ba, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right. Yung mga kabaliktaran po nito na nagagawa natin, talagang hindi po tayo magkakaroon ng kapayapaan. Kasi alam natin na, it's not of God. It is from enemy. So, lagi nating isipin po, kung whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, kapag kabaliktaran po niya yung mga nagagawa natin, hindi po yun sa Panginoon. At talagang hindi po tayo magkakaroon ng peace sa ating isipan. A one, um, peace of God, a wonderful thing, and a rightful heritage of every believers. So the peace of God is a subject feeling. Pero the peace with God is not a subject feeling. Rather, it is an objective fact based on your justification. So relationship, ang ibig sabihin ng ng peace with God, relationship with God, personal relationship with God. Kaya nga, kailangan po natin ang Panginoong Isus dahil yun lang po ang makaka-justify po sa atin para magkaroon tayo ng personal relationship din po sa ating Panginoon. The person who has been justified through faith inter- enters into a new relationship with God. Anong relationship yon? A relationship marked by Peace and forgiveness, a relationship that remains solid and secure despite our emotional ups and downs and the state of our feelings. So, hindi na, yung, hindi na po yun magbabago. Kasi kapag tinanggap, tinanggap natin ating Panginoong Jesus, we have peace with God. And hindi na po yun magbabago. Pero yung the peace of God, yun po yung nababago-bago. Kasi depende po yun sa pagsunod natin sa Panginoon. Letter B, sin is the obstacle that stand between you and God. Basahin natin sa Isaiah 59.2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. Kaya po ba diba, kapag, kapag may nagagawa po tayong kasalanan, Parang feeling natin hindi naririnig ng Panginoon ang ating mga panalangin. Kasi nga, because of sin, kaya nasa separate tayo sa Panginoon. Pero once that um, we repent, nakahingi tayo ng kapatawaran sa Kanya, what a relief po, ba diba? Yung parang um, hindi siya malayo sa'yo, nandyan lang siya, malapit. There is basically one major obstacle that the, and that is the Sin. Sabi po dito, man is not a sinner because he commits sins. He commits sin because he is a sinner. So, hindi po nagkakasala ang tao dahil, hindi po makasalanan ang tao dahil nag-commit siya ng sin, kundi nag-commit siya ng sin dahil makasalanan siya. Yun po yung nature natin. Yung nature ng flesh natin. Kaya nga, kailangan natin lagi ang Holy Spirit kasi ang um, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit every day, pwedeng yung flesh talaga natin, yung chair number two. <laughs> ano ni Pastora? Kaya dapat, lagi tayong chair number one. Choose number one. Our sins separate us from having, from having a relationship with the Holy God. So how we deal with the problem of sin There is only one way, and that is to be justified, to be declared innocent by God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Faith leads to peace. Justification leads to relationship with God. Di ba po? Ang ganda po. Basahin po natin yung Hebrews 10, 19-22. Hebrews 10, 19-22. A call to persevere in faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is His body, 
And since we have great priests over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews 9.14-16 to 16. Same lang po, yung great high priest natin, ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen po. Matthew 27:51 it says, At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split. So, nang natorn po yung, yung curtain ng temple, it's a sign na malayo na tayo. Kaya nga po nakakatawag na tayong Abba Father. Dahil yung wall na nakaka-separate sa atin is wala na. Dahil sa blood ng Panginoong Jesus. Letter C, God wants to restore you to relationship with Himself. So hindi lang po ito sa sa ang um, hindi pa Kristiyano, kundi maging po sa ating mga believers na Kasi minsan, di ba, nalalamig tayo sa Panginoon. Lalo na kapag madami tayong pinagdadaanan, minsan nangihina po talaga tayo. Kaya God wants to restore you to relationship with Himself. Kumbaga, ang sinasabi niya dito, go back to your first love. First Peter 3.18 For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body that made alive in the spirit. God has every personal reason in the world to condemn you. And yet, amazingly enough, instead, He wants to restore you to relationship with Himself. Kumbaga, marami ang, maraming rason ang Panginoon para i-condemn tayo. Pero, dahil nga sa pagmamahal niya po sa bawat isa sa atin, hindi niya tayo kinukondem. Instead, mas umaapa pa po ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa atin. Kasi yung pagmamahal na yon yun yung nag sa atin para tayo mag-repent. Di ba po? Yung love po talaga, it leads to repentance. So question po, why does justification lead to relationship? Sige po, basahin natin yung answer. Because God wants it to. It is the purpose of relationship that God justifies us and declare us righteous so that the offense may be removed our hostility disarmed, and we may find peace with God, our judge and Savior. So it is the purpose of relationship that God justifies us and, de- and declare us righteous. So every time na nakakafil po tayo ng condemnation, alalahanin po natin yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa Cruz ng Kalbaryo. Kasi kapag nakakafeel pala tayo po ng condemnation at nakakondem din tayo sa iba, parang binabaliwala natin yung power ng blood ni Jesus. Kasi, kaya nga binu- nabuhos yung dugo niya para sa atin, not to condemn us, but to love us, and hindi tayo mapunta sa enemy. So letter D, this peace with God comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, notice that this peace with God comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, yung faith galing sa Panginoon, yung peace galing din sa Panginoon. Romans 5.1 There is no other basis. Anything else is a false peace. Minsan po, baga, minsan, maduman nga kita sa beach, ma-relax sila kita, ta, para may peace kita. Pero, ang, ang tunay po talagang peace sa mind natin, sa heart natin, Kasi kahit anong gawin natin, minsan, ang ini-ignore na lang natin para magkaroon tayo ng peace, kahit wala naman talaga, it's a false peace. <laughs> May false peace. Diba? Iba, po, iba po yung kino-confront sa ini-ignore. Ay, ini- Oo, tama. Kasi minsan, baga, pag grabe ng tigisip na baga, no, minsan, minsan, madaman mo na kita, mapa, mapalipot-lipot, mapayayahan. Pero pag uli, yung manggiraray, diba po, Kaya it's a false peace. Ang peace lang talaga, mararanas na natin sa Panginoong Isus. Kagaya po nito, Sabbath rest. So, meron tayong kapayapaan at kapahingahan. Amen po. Yun nga, naalala ko yung sabi dito ni Pastor na 
ang daming ano um, sa inner man maingay <laughs> ang ingay po talaga pag pagsalak-salak na <laughs> halo-halo na sa family sa work sa kung ano-ano po kaya talaga po sa presence lang ng Panginoon tayo mag magkakaroon ng kapayapaan kaya every time na troubled na po tayo parang ang bigat na po talaga sa Panginoon po tayo lumapit hindi po sa mga mall sa mga beach <laughs> Hindi po kung saan. Sa Panginoon lang po talaga. Ang grabing pong pag-correct nito po sa akin. <laughs> so, sabi nga po dyan sa Jeremiah 6.14. Jeremiah 6.14. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Sabi dito ni Jeremiah, Peace, peace, they say when there is no peace. Kung baga dito, ang pin, yung mga false prophets sinasabi nila na okay lang okay lang yung ano yung lugar natin okay lang yung bansa natin pero ano lang yun false peace lang yun sinasabi lang nila na may peace pero wala naman talagang peace same din po sa Jeremiah 8.11 sabi din din po doon peace peace they say when there is no peace kaya misan pag Pag uh, ang um, i-design po natin kung, kung may peace po ba talaga tayo or ini-ignore lang po natin yung mga bagay-bagay para magka-peace. Yun lang po yung ano natin doon. So we achieve this state of peace with God through faith in Christ Jesus alone. So kapag nagugulan tayo, kanina tayo lalapit at gusto natin ng kapayapaan sa Panginoong Jesus. Acts 4.12, sabi po dito, Salvation is found in no one else. So, di ba po? For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Salvation is found in no one else but in Jesus. John 14.27, sabi po dito, Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Pero, di ba po nagsabi din po, may sinabi din po si Lord sa scripture na na pumunta siya dito hindi para mag magbigay ng peace kundi ano, kaguluhan division. O, di ba po parang contradict doon sa John 14:27 na sabi niya, "Peace I live with you." Pero dito sa Luke 12:51, sabi niya dito, "Do you think that I came to give peace on the earth?" O di ba po contradict siya? No, I say to you, but rather division. Pero po, ang word ng Panginoon, hindi siya confusing. Ang ano lang po dito, i-connect po natin sa 1 John 3.1. 1 John 3.1, sabi dito, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Ito yung reason kung bakit ang nagkakaroon tayo ng trouble sa mundong ito. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Kaya nga, kapag tayo sa Panginoon na, hindi na tayo kinikilala ng mundo. Kaya nga, nakakaranas na tayo ng iba't ibang persecution. Kasi we are not of this world talaga. We belong to Christ. Kaya hindi po talaga magkocontradict. Peace, I live with you. Tapos sinabi na naman, I bring division. Kasi nga, yun nga, may kaguluan talaga sa mundong ito. Pero sa Panginoon lang tayo magkumapit. Ganun din po yung sinabi sa Philippians 3.20. But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Siguro ko nagkakadivision lang kapag pinilit natin yung chair number two. Yung flesh, di ba? And kapag nag-conform tayo sa takbo ng mundo. Kaya sabi ni Lord, di ba, do not conform any longer to the, to the pattern of this world. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Kaya nga po, yon. Kaya pag nagugulahan na tayo, isipin na lang natin kung chair number one or chair number two. <laughs> number three, hope grows out of peace. So, dito, i-define naman natin yung worldly hope and Christian hope. Kung doon sa una, ang dinify natin is 
yung difference between the peace of God and the peace with God. Ah, tapos yung worldly peace, tapos yung So, ito na po. Grow, grow, hope grows out of peace. Yung worldly hope may be no more than wishful thinking, marred by uncertainty and susceptible, susceptible to disappointment. So, ang worldly hope, disappointment talaga. It leads to disappointment. Pero pag Christian hope is based on the firm foundation of peace with God. Ito yung relationship with God marked by grace and forgiveness. Di ba po? Kaya, malalaman natin kung worldly hope yon or Christian hope. Pag worldly hope, nakaka-disappoint. Amen po. Pero pag Christian hope, it is a firm foundation of peace with God. Kaya, hindi tayo madi-disappoint. Kasi, si Lord, hindi naman talaga tayo din disappoint Minsan, nadi-disappoint tayo kasi hindi natin nakukuha yung kung ano yung expect natin. Pero kapag Ang um, yung ano ng Panginoon ang nung gusto ng Panginoon ang nangyari sa buhay natin minsan sarili nating nadi-disappoint lang kasi hindi natin na nakuha yung inexpect natin So A we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God 1 John 3 2 to 3 Dear friends now we are children of God and what we we will be has not yet been made known But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see as He is. All who have this hope in Him purity themselves, just as He is pure. As believers in Christ, we are destined for? For glory. So yung, ito naman yung question. Mas itingnan po natin yung question at ipander po natin. How do we know that Christ will one day present us perfect before the Father? And how do we know the certainty of this wonderful hope, this wonderful promise of God for the future? So, nandiyan na po yung answer. <laughs> Basahin na lang po natin. <laughs> Our hope is based on the past. Ano yung past na yon? Sige. Basahin po natin sa 1 Peter 2, 24. Hindi yung mga past ng mga exes. Eh. <laughs> past ng ginawa ng Panginoon. <laughs> <laughs> Pasok. So, yun po sa 1 Peter 2.4 It says po, He personally carried our sins in His body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By His wounds, you are healed. O, sa mga nakakaranas po ng karamdaman at ano man pong ang sickness and diseases Panginoon sa mga oras na ito, Panginoon. By your stripes, Panginoon, they are healed and we are healed physically and spiritually. We are healed. Thank you, Lord. So, ito po yung ano, our hope also springs from the present, the present work of God in our lives. Ano po yung present work of God in our lives? Sanctification. Sino po nakakaranas ng sanctification? Lahat naman tayo, di ba? Ang daming, ang dami po talagang pinagdadaanan kasi, yun nga yung sabi ni Pastora Tina, ang mundong ito, hindi, palala ng palala na po talaga. Pasama ng pasama na. Kaya, hindi na po tayo makiayon sa takbo ng mundong ito. Take note. Di ba pag sinabing take note, bigyan natin ng full attention. <laughs> Full attention. Attention. <laughs> so, basahin po natin. We saw no progress in our lives if we weren't going anywhere spiritually. Then we might doubt the goal towards which we are heading. But God is working in our lives now. He is making us more like Christ now. He is moving us forward. Di ba? He is moving us forward towards Glory. Kaya Kingdom Forwarders Ministries, go forward. Go forward lang. Kahit anong pagdaanan natin, go forward lang. Letter B. 
God accomplishes His work of sanctification in us through the process of suffering. suffering. Di ba po, pag pinag-uusapan natin yung faith, peace, hope, and love, parang sa, sa, sa akin na lang yan, sa akin na lang. Pero pag suffering na, o sa yung garudahin, aram kong pasahin. <laughs> Di ba po, minsan yan talaga po ang pumapasok sa isip natin. Pag suffering, ayaw na natin. Pero yung pala po ang, ang nag-purify po sa atin. Yung suffering na yon Kaya, yun nga, ako minsan, na, na, na correct din talaga ako ng Panginoon na minsan nahihiya ako kapag may struggle ako, kapag may suffering ang pinagdadaanan. Pero, dapat pala, hindi po tayo mahiya kasi, na, kasi nga, yun, kailangan mong pagdaanan po talaga. Need lang ng guidance ng Holy Spirit sa mga ang decision making. Yan po. Basahin natin yung sabi ni Job sa 5.7. Di ba po kilala natin si Job? Nagrabi po yung pinagdaanan niya. Namatay na yung mga anak niya. Nawala na siya ng mga um, possession sa buhay. Pero still, at the end, nag-stand nag firm pa din siya sa kanyang pananampalataya. Although, ang um, na-question niya din ang Panginoon, pero nag po siya noon. Kaya parang ganito din tayo, di ba? Pag ang dami ng pinagdadaanan natin, parang ang um, tinatanong din natin si Lord, Lord, bakit ganito? Sunod-sunod, ganito, ganyan. Pero yun nga, dahil sa pagsubok na yun, doon din tayo tumatatag. Amen po. Doon natin mas nakikilala ang Panginoong Jesus. At doon din natin mas nakikilala kung ano yung kakayahan natin at kahinaan natin. Kaya salamat Panginoon sa mga suffering na nararanasan po namin. We praise you, we honor you Panginoon sa suffering na ang um, challenges na pinagdadaanan po ng bawat isa. Sige po, basahin po natin yung Job 5.7. Sabi dito ni Job, Yet man is born to Trouble has the sparks fly, fly upward. So yet, sabi ni, ni Job, yet man is born to trouble. Kaya ngayon sabi ng Panginoon na dito sa mundo, magkakaroon kayo ng kapighatian. Kasi nga, kasama na talaga yun sa buhay natin. <laughs> Hindi natin yun ma... Kumbaga, data ito malilip, malilikayan. Talagang ang pangunta at ang pangunta ito. So, sa so John 16.33, sabi dito, I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So, every day nilalakaran na lang natin yung victory ng Panginoon. Nasa sa atin na lang po talaga kung paano natin yun lakaran every day. Kasi, He already overcome the world. Ibig sabihin, may kasagutan na po talaga sa lahat ng pagsubok natin, ang kailangan lang talaga natin, yung kung paano natin yung malalampasan. Amen po, Grandma. <laughs> Romans 8.28, yung paborito ni Pastora. Sabi dito, And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Ah, kaya pala po talaga nakaka-comfort din tayo sa may mga pinagdadaanan. Kasi nga, galing, yan, galing din yun sa Panginoon na comfort na yun. Kaya tayo nakakapag-comfort sa iba. Second Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Okay na po yun. So we live in a fallen world where people get hurt or sick or die. No one it is exempt from suffering. It is part of your lot in this world. You can ignore it. You can deny it. Oh, di ba po? You can try to explain it away, but you cannot escape it. Everyone suffers. So, hindi na po ito bago sa atin na may mga suffering po talaga tayo. 
However, you can choose whether to suffer as Christian or as a non-Christian. So, yun yung pagpipiliin, pagpipilian natin kung magsasuffer tayo as Christian or magsasuffer tayo as a non-Christian. Kung magsasuffer tayo as non-Christian, parang kinalimutan natin yung lahat ng promises ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. Minsan, di, di, minsan po talaga, kapag may mga suffering po baga, nangihina tayo, nakakalimutan natin yung mga promises ni Lord sa atin na ang um, The, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Tapos minsan, pag may suffering tayo, nasa sulok na lang tayo, rukruko na kita. <laughs> diba po, yun lang po palang reminder, reminder sa atin ng Panginoon na kapag may suffering tayo, ang alalahanan natin yung promises niya at i-declare natin. Kasi, the word of the Lord is alive and active. So kapag binitawan mo po talaga yun, It will come to pass. Amen. Amen po. So, sabi po dito, the non-Christian has no promise attached. Oh, sabi dito, to his suffering. His suffering serves no eternal purpose. So, walang eternal purpose yon. Pero pag Christian, we have God's promise of peace and comfort in the midst of trial. Minsan may mga ginagamit ang Panginoong Hesus para i-comfort tayo, um, para tulungan tayo. May mga other way lang talaga ang Panginoon para ma-overcome natin yung try. Kaya nga sabi, ba diba, we need each other. We need to lift each other's up. Romans 8.28, yung nga sabi, all things work together for our good, for those who love God, according to His Purpose. So letter C, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Pag perseverance po ang na, na-encounter ko, or naalala ko po yung sa pursue the imperishable crown. Di ba po? Mag-persevere lang tayo. Sabi po dun sa Jude 23.10, But he knows the way I take, that I take. When he tested me, I will come forth as gold. You know, yung, yung purify. Purify. <laughs> Pinapurify tayo ng Panginoon. Yung mga testing po sa atin, lumalabas kung ano po talaga yung true character po natin. And kung paano po tayo mag sa problema. Yun po yung, ano, yung point po dito. Ano ba, may problema tayo, paano tayo mag Ang um, pag may problema ba, nagpapasalamat agad tayo sa Panginoon. Lord, salamat sa problema. <laughs> Di ba? Yun yung ano, ano talaga sa atin. Parang pag may problema ba, ga? sino ba dito sa atin ang nakapagpasalamat sa problema? Yung first na nakaisip talaga na, ano ba, may problema ang na-encounter. Tapos, Lord, salamat po sa problema. <laughs> Di ba? Kaya ito po yung tinituro sa atin ng Panginoon na kapag may na-encounter tayo, pasalamatan natin ang Panginoon dahil alam natin na may ilalabas ang Panginoon sa karakter natin. Amen po? May babaguhin sa Lord sa karakter natin. Kaya kapag may problema, magpasalamat sa Panginoon. Yun na po yung unang ano natin ang gagawin agad. So, suffering. Ano po yung ano, definition ng suffering? A pressing together, pressure, stress, tribulation, afflictions, troubles. It does not refer to minor inconvenience but real hardships. Oh, real hardship siya. Bako siya karaw-karaw. <laughs> real hardship po talaga. <laughs> oh, ito naman po. Take note. Attention. <laughs> Christian who understand what God is doing will actually glory in His afflictions. We should exalt in our sufferings. So sabi po dito, we know that suffering produces perseverance. 
the verb here should really be translated because we have known. Yung know, palitan natin ng known. That is, we have seen or experienced that suffering produces perseverance. Kasi naalala nyo po, kapag may before, may mga pinagdaanan tayo, di ba? Alam na natin kung paano, naranasan na natin yun. Kaya alam na natin kung paano ang pakiramdam nun. Kaya baga, di ba naka-advise kita sa ibang tao? Kasi naranasan na natin yun. Already known na sa atin. Nakita na natin, naranasan na natin before. Kaya, kung baga, pag may problema tayo at the present time, para sa sabihin natin, so dati nga, nalampasan ko, hindi pa kaya, di ba? Yun po talaga yun, na kung isipon mo, pirang taon ka na ngun yan, ako, 33. <laughs> sa 33 years of existence ko, di ba? Ano siya, ang dami ko ng pinagdaanan, mula pagkabata hanggang ngayon, pero still, I stand, di ba, by the grace of God. Kaya, Yung ang message lang dito ng Panginoon, kahit anong pagsubok, malalampasan at malalampasan po talaga natin. Ang dami po po talaga bagang niya na nag-suffer sa depression and anxiety, na tige end yung buhay nila dahil sa grabe ng problema, hindi na nila kayang um, isipin or solusyonan. Pero kaya yun yung encouragement din sa atin ng mga believers na um, maging encouragement tayo sa iba. Kasi ang dami po talaga ng na nagdadanas kay depression. Kung saan tayo ilid ng Panginoon, doon talaga nangangailangan ng word ng Panginoon dahil tanging ang word ng Panginoon ang makakatulong sa sitwasyon talaga natin ngayon. Christian can look back on the earlier sufferings and trials in his life, o, di ba po, and see how God has used them in the past. to develop perseverance in his life, to develop that admirable quality of steadfastness, patient waiting, and endurance. We rejoice in our sufferings because we know that God is in control and that He is working to achieve something in us through our suffering. And as Christians, our trials are not without purpose. Kaya laging may purpose ang Panginoon sa mga trials natin. Basahin natin sa Hebrews 12, 7 to 11. Endure hardship as discipline. Oh, di ba po? Discipline na yun ng ating Panginoon. Minsan kasi may mga, um, yung mga ha, pinagdadaanan din natin, consequences din yun ng mga maling nagawa natin, maling desisyon natin, kaya nagsasuffer tayo. Pero sabi dito, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as His children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate. Oh, di ba po? Kaya, praise God, we are legitimate. <laughs> and not true sons and daughters at all. Oh, kapag, kapag hindi tayo dinidisiplina, hindi tayo mga anak niya. Amen po. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us. Kung yung mga human fathers na natin dinidisiplina tayo, di ba? Yung ama pa kaya natin sa langit na ayaw tayong mapahamak talaga. And we respect them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of Spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while. Oh, di ba? Little while lang po yun. <laughs> pero, pag, pero parang akala natin ang, ang tagal-tagal na. <laughs> Pero sabi dito, little while lang po daw yon So, paniwalaan po natin dahil salita ito ng Panginoon. <laughs> little while lang ito. It will come to pass. As they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Sino pong mga nasasaktan dito? <laughs> It is painful. Later on, however, it produces, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by, a, by it. So, tinitrain tayo ng Panginoon at dinidisiplina tayo ng ating Panginoon. Kapag may disiplina, ibig sabihin may ginawa tayong mali. <laughs> Yun nga po. Di ba po, sa human, sa human ano, fathers natin, di ba pag may mali tayo, 
pwedeng paluin tayo, pwedeng kausapin tayo, pagsabihan tayo. Ganon din si Father. Kaya praise God sa pagdidisiplina ng Panginoon sa bawat isa po sa atin. So da, sabi po dito ni John Calvin, suffering, ito din po, yung suffering natin, pwede din po ang um, mag, um, mag, mag-provoke in a great part of mankind to murmur against God. Kung baga yung suffering, may disadvantage din. <laughs> may disadvantage din. Kasi nga, suffering provokes a great part of mankind to murmur against God and even to curse Him. Naalala niyo po yung sa Exodus, Di ba po yung mga Israelita, lagi silang nagre sa Panginoon. So, dahil nga nakakarana sila ng, ng suffering doon, kaya sige sindang murmur, grumblings. <laughs> Yun nga po. Kaya, it provokes din na magmurmur tayo. Pero ngayon na ang binigita, binigay ito sa atin ng Panginoon, di na kita magmurmur. <laughs> Instead, iluhod na lang po natin. <laughs> Kasi yun lang po talaga ang, ang magagawa po natin. Iluhod sa Panginoon ang, ang every challenges na kinakaharap po natin. Suffering produces perseverance when we continue to hold strong to our faith. Hold strong to our faith even in the midst of our trials. So God is working the character of Christ in you through trials. Di ba po? Ang ganda po na minabago tayo ng Panginoon. from glory to glory. Binabagaw yung mga karakter natin. Character he, here is also the word for proof. Our character is tested and approved by experience. Kagaya ni Job sa 23.10. Ito naman po yung take note po natin dito. This proof of your character is the ground of your hope. God is working in you. He is molding you to be like Christ. He is taking the common everyday sufferings that all persons experience. Sabi po diba sa, sa scriptures, wala pang pagsubok na hindi nararanasan ng tao. So lahat tayo nakakaranas po talaga. Hindi po kayo nag-iisa. Sama-sama tayo po. Every day, and He is turning them to good for you. He is in fact preparing you for His kingdom. Ah, ba diba po? Pinaprepare niya tayo for His kingdom. Number four, love is the fulfill, fulfillment of hope. It is the ultimate goal, the greatest thing of all. Di ba po sabi doon sa 1 Corinthians 13, 13? And, and now, these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of this is love. Dahil sa love, nag-start lahat. Sa love ng Father, nag-start lahat. Kung nasaan po tayo ngayon, dahil yung sa pagmamahal sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Amen po. Palakpakan po natin ating Panginoon sa pagmamahal niya po sa atin. So sabi dito sa Romans 5.5, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Naalala niyo po yung um, preaching po ni Beloved Hana about sa Holy Spirit. Sino po yung Holy Spirit? Parakletos, our helper. The word disappoint here can mean to dishonor or disgrace, to deceive or to put to shame. Pero sabi po dun sa Psalm 25.3 ni David, No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. Kaya asan po yung ating hope? Nasa ating Panginoong Jesus. Di ba po si David? Maraming nagawa niya ng kasalanan, di ba? Isa, isa dun yung, yung sa... kay Bathsheba, yung pinapatay niya yung asawa ni Bathsheba. Pero, nung nagrepent siya, syempre, the Lord is and just and always ready to forgive us. Kaya yun, ang lagi niyang nililift up tayo every time na ang um, nakakagawa tayo ng mali, i-restore niya kung ano yung, yung tayo. Kasi di ba pag nakakagawa tayo ng mali, Grabe yung pag ano natin sa sarili natin. Na feeling natin. Na, siguro nakakaramdam tayo ng pagkahiya kasi yun din yung consequences ng ginawa natin. Pero sabi ng Panginoon, whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. 
So, i-re-restore niya kung ano yung, halimbawa, kung ano yung nagawa mong mali, doon ka niya i-re-raise up ulit. I-re-restore niya yung integrity mo. So, letter A, God pours out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. John 7:38 to 39 John 7:38 to 39 Whoever believes in me as the scripture has said rivers of living water will flow from within them by this he meant the spirit whom whom those who believe in him were later to receive up to the time the Spirit had been given, since Jesus had not yet been, uh, not yet been glorified. So, Titus 3, 5 to 6, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of, of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. This praise poured out is the same word used of the Holy Spirit being poured out at the Pentecost. Nalala niyo po yung Pentecost? Yung 120, yung nasa upper room. O, di ba po? They speak in tongues, in ano, different languages. They filled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, example din din dito, yung parable of the wine skin sa Matthew 9, 16-17. Yung sa parable of white skin, it is a picture of something being poured out in abundance, being spilled all over the place. This is no cautious feeling of a vessel, it is messy. God pours, pours out His love into our heart with wild abandon. He floods our, your heart, your cup running over. Saan nyo to na naririnig, your cup running over? Sa Psalm 23. Di ba po, your cup running over. So, empty yourselves spiritually in order to be filled up and to be available for Him to use us. It means um, detachment from all desire that, that is not of God. So, para tayo ma-fill in, we need to be empty. Lahat ng um, bagahin natin, kailangan natin iwan para ma-fill, ma-fill tayo ng Panginoon. At malaya siyang makakilos po sa buhay natin. Sabi po dito sa Matthew 9, 16-17, Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wine skin, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruin the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins so that both are preserved. So yun po, kailangan natin i-empty yung self natin para malaya pong makakilos ng ating Panginoon sa buhay natin. Letter B, we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, yung parakletos. Acts 2.38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Itong Holy Spirit, a one-time giving of the Holy Spirit may refer either to the Holy Spirit given to the church at Pentecost or to the Holy Spirit given to the believer at the new birth. Sino dito yung mga bagong baptize? O, oh, ba po? Gift. Binigyan na kayo ng Holy Spirit ng Panginoon. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Emphasize here is on the gift of the Holy Spirit. So ito po, take note po natin dito. The final proof that our hope will not disappoint us is that God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. God has not abandoned you in your time of trial. God's love, you, God's love for you and friendship with you are made evident by His Holy Spirit living in you. There is no greater proof that you have been declared righteous than God's Holy Spirit living in you. So the Holy Spirit would not take up residence in a person who was unrighteous in God's eyes. So di ba tayo righteous na tayo sa paningin ng Panginoon dahil sa dugo niya. 
Kaya naninirahan ang Holy Spirit po sa atin. Ang kailangan lang, i-acknowledge lang natin siya every day na siya ang mag-take over sa buhay natin every day sa lahat ng area ng life natin. So God's gift of the Holy Spirit is an example of God's lavish generosity to us. It is an almost embarrassing overflow of God's goodness and grace. God's love is the fulfillment of hope. It is the ultimate goal, the greatest thing of hope, of all. Sige po, dito na po tayo sa ating conclusion. Palakpakan nga po natin ang ating Panginoon. Yay! Conclusion. Sige po, sabay-sabay natin pong basahin at i-eternalize po natin. I-ano po natin, isa puso po talaga natin yung, yung binigay sa atin ng Panginoon na word po ngayon. Faith increase leads to peace with God which leads to hope in God even and especially through our sufferings which leads to a wondrous experience of God's amazing love. We stand in this grace. We stand by God's grace alone. If we ever look to our own works, we shall certainly fall. Jesus Christ ushered us into the very presence of God where we have full and immediate access at all times. This is amazing grace. Diba po? Diba? Amazing grace. Praise God. Kaya po, ano po yung title po ng, ng ano natin ngayon? Ng sermon? Be steadfast in your faith with peace, hope, and love. Lagi po yung mag, um, may connection sa bawat isa. Steadfast, ibig sabihin, firmly fix, firm in belief. May determination, loyal and immovable. So, hindi po tayo magiging immovable dahil we are be steadfast in our faith. Thank you, Lord. So, ang worship. So, ito pong kantang to, um, i-meditate po natin. Um, Mag-thank you tayo sa Panginoon, sa goodness niya, dahil lahat ng ito, sa grasya lamang ng Panginoon po talaga, kaya tayo nakakatayo. Kaya tayo may faith, dahil gift yun ng Panginoon sa atin. Dahil, dahil tayo, kaya tayo may peace, may hope and love, dahil binigay din yun sa atin ng Panginoon. Da, kaya lahat ay sa grasya ng Panginoon lamang. Kaya meditate po natin itong kantang ito. And, And talk to God kung ano po yung gusto nyo pong sabihin sa Kanya. Malaya po tayong makakalapit po sa ating Panginoong Jesus. He is always read, ready to listen sa mga hearts cry natin, sa mga pinagdadaanan ng bawat isa. Ibigay natin to sa Panginoon. Ibigay mo yan sa Panginoon. Dahil walang imposible po sa Lord. Tinitinglang lang po talaga niya ang puso natin. Ang puso ng bawat isa sa atin. Sige po, tumayo po tayo at mag-worship po tayo sa ating Panginoon. Malaya po tayong makakalapit sa ating Panginoon. We stand because of the precious blood of the Lamb. When we see the cross, we see the victory of Jesus over sin and death. When we see the cross, we see the love of Christ sa bawat isa sa atin, sa bawat pamilya natin. When we see the cross, we see healing sa lahat ng aspect ng life natin, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially, lalo na spiritually. We are healed when we see the cross. We see the mercy and grace of our Father. 
Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much, Lord God. Sa buhay na salita mo, na mananatili sa puso po ng bawat isa. Lord, lalabas kami dito ng hindi empty-handed. Lalabas kami dito, nadaladala po namin ang iyong presensya, Panginoon. Magiging daluyan kami ng iyong pag-ibig at pagpapala po sa ibang tao, Panginoon. And sa mga sa, dadating, sa darating na linggong ito, Panginoon, give us strength na ma-overcome namin yung mga challenges and sufferings, trials, na pagdadaanan po ng bawat isa, Lord God. Arise our faith, Panginoon, ng may kapayapaan, may pag-asa at pag-ibig, Panginoon. You first love us, Lord God, kaya kami nakakapagmahal din po sa kapwa namin, Panginoon. Wala po kaming naiambag, Panginoon. Lahat po ito galing sa iyo, Lord God. Kaya, Lord God, we repent sa mga panahon na hindi mo po kami nagamit, Panginoon, for the glory of your holy name, Lord God. We repent, Lord God, sa mga pagkukulang namin bilang anak mo, Panginoon, at bilang kapatid, bilang brethren po sa aming kapwa, Lord God. Patawarin mo po kami, Panginoon. Nothing is too hard for you, Lord. We trust you, Lord Jesus Christ. And by this song, makikita natin ang grasya ng Panginoon kung gaano kalaki, pagmamahal ng Panginoon, kung gaano kalaki sa bawat isa sa atin. Malaya ka po, malaya po kayong kausapin ng ating Panginoon sa mga oras na ito. Kung kayo po ay pinangihina ng pananampalataya dahil sa mga pinagdadaanan nyo, as the Lord napalakasin niya ang iyong pananampalataya. Kung wala ka pong kapayapaan sa isipan, let's ask God to give you peace and to, to have peace with Him. Kung nawawalan ka ng pag-asa at na na, nalalabuan ka sa mga nangyayari in this present time, ang tanging Panginoon lamang ang ating pag-asa, our hope of glory. Kung nakakaramdam ka na wala sa iyong nagmamahal, nandyan ang Panginoon, laging open ang arms niya for you na lumapit ka sa Kanya. Lahat ng lahat ginagawa ng Panginoon sa bawat isa sa atin. Siya ang unang nag insist Kaya wala tayong rason para hindi siya bigyan lagi ng glory. Walang rason para hindi natin siya i-acknowledge everyday. Walang rason para hindi natin siya tanggapin bilang personal Savior of our life. Jesus, the hope of glory. Thank you, Panginoon. Mangusap ka po sa bawat isa sa amin. Let your peace that surpasses all understanding ang mag-ingat po sa puso at isipan namin, Panginoon, lagi. So that we really experience your peace, Panginoon. Help us to endure the hardship, Panginoon. As we come up higher, Lord God, mas lumalim pa po ang pananampalataya po namin sa iyo. Salamat, Panginoon, sa presensya mo po, Panginoon. Malaya ka pong kumilo sa bawat isa, Panginoon. Salamat, Lord God, dahil malaya kami nakakalapit sa iyo, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, and thank you, God, the Holy Spirit. my 
Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding ang mag-ingat at maghari po sa isip at puso ng bawat isa sa atin. Thank you, Lord. You are our hope. You are our love. And our faith is found in you. And you are our firm foundation, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. All the glory and honor and praise belongs to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, na-excite ako. Ang ganda ng word ng Panginoon. Di ba po? Ang naramdaman ko ay tinapyasan talaga. Sinapsap everything. Di ba? Kinalkal ang puso at ang isipan. Amen. Amen. Because of sufferings, naging malalim ang faith natin sa Panginoon. Isa po ako sa example niyan. Sa mga pinagdaanan na marami, talagang tinapyasan. At lalong lumalim ang faith. So, ito ang ating panahon na, again, sa pag-communion natin, ang faith natin ay palalimin. Amen? So, let us give thanks to the Lord for His good. His love endures forever. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. And for gathering us in your name, please seal your word with your precious blood. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. 
So beloved, exercise, exercise natin ang ating faith sa pag-partake natin ng bread and wine. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. That is faith. For, na ang Panginoon ay namatay at siya ay babalik uli. Amen. Amen. So, kunin na po natin ating mga bread and wine. Sige po, itas natin ang ating mga tinapay. At, you know. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night He was betrayed took bread and said, This is my body which is for you. Take this in remembrance of me. Let's eat. Let's raise. In the same in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take this in remembrance of me." Let's drink. Thank you, Lord. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Amen. po tayong lahat. And then let's give each other Shabbat Shalom. Sabihan natin yung katabi natin. Kapatid, ipapasalamat ako sa Panginoon dahil patuloy niya tayong binabago. Praise God. So, 
He who is in Christ is a new creation. Amen? Amen. Heart pressed on each 
Father God, thank you for the Sabbath rest and worship. We enjoy in your presence. We enjoy in your love, in your grace, and in fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful family, kingdom forwarding family, whom you binded in love and unity, in the sanctuary of peace and hope. The house of light where we uphold in honor the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. the King of kings and the Lord of lords, in His commandment. Thank you, Father God, for the heavenly wisdom, knowledge, revelation bestowed upon this family church. Thank you for the renewing of our physical, spiritual strength for another week-long journey. Father God, thank you, Father God, for the beautiful message, Lord. The message of our foundation, why we are here, Father God. Thank you for all the musicians, the kingdom singers. Thank you, Lord, for the kingdom, kingdom media bureau. Thank you, Lord, for all the intercessors. Thank you for all the worshipers. Father God, we glorify your name. Because you are the only God, Lord. No one else, Father God. You are the God. The God who loves us. The God who comforts us. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done to me. In my times of pain. Salamat. Thank you for your love and goodness. Please, let us continue worshiping whatever we do and whenever we go to glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Lord and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
declare prophetic declaration I cannot sing Lord, Lord make his way shine upon me and be gracious to me the Lord make his countenance upon me and give me peace I will glorify the name of the Lord in my life and for my family for my friends and for everyone Shabbat shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom po.